the link. Okay. Can you see now? Right. So I explain again. Actually, I, I already until here. Right? So I will explain again. Okay, so from here, this is the direction of propagation. This is the normal. Uh, this is the normal line. Okay, you have to draw the normal line. Okay, and then after that, you draw the direction of propagation. So here, from deep to shallow, it will reflect it towards the normal line. So you can see the direction of propagation here, it reflected towards. Okay, so it become closer to the normal line. Okay, then after that, okay, you underline until it hit the, okay, the end of the surface of the shallow area here. Okay, so here when you go to the deep area, so this is the normal line. Okay, so this is the normal line. Okay, so from shallow to deep, it will reflect it away. Okay, so this one, it will reflect it away. Okay, away from the normal lines means it move further from the normal line. Okay, so you just underline the wave here. After that, you underline the wave. So the wave might, must be 90 degrees with the direction of the propagation. So this is the direction of the propagation, right? So when you draw the wavelength here, okay, you draw the wave here. Okay, you have to make sure there is a 90 degrees, okay, between your wave and also the direction of propagation. So it should be 90 degrees like this. Right? Then, after this, okay, you draw the line for the deep area, okay, the wavelength for the deep area. So for the deep area, you know that the wavelength, okay, uh, is increasing because it's from the shallow to deep the wavelength will increase. So when the wavelength is increased, right, and then the wavelength must be same, okay, like this one, okay, at this part, okay, deep. So you draw the wavelength, right, and again, the wavelength should be 90 degrees with the direction of propagation, right? Uh, so that's for the, the diagram, okay, how to draw the uh, with refraction for the diagram. So let's see for this one. Okay. For this one again, okay, this one because this line is only straight line. Okay, so you don't need to draw the uh, normal line. Okay, so you don't need to draw the normal line. Only for this part only got the normal line. Okay, so the line, the direction of the propagation, we go straight away. Okay, we go straight away because the surface here in this is the plane, it's like a plane, uh, plane surface. Okay, so you just go straight and then when you come here, okay, then you draw the normal line. Okay, so when you draw the normal line, again, this is shallow to deep. So this one from shallow to deep, it should be refracted away from the normal line. So you draw the Direction of propagation away from the normal line. Alright, so the next step what you should do, okay, you should draw the wavelength. So for the shallow area, the wavelength will be decreased. Okay, so you can see the wavelength will be decreased if you compare to the deep area. Okay, so you underline. Alright, so after that when it goes to the deep area, so when it goes to the deep area, the wavelength will be increased. Okay, so the wavelength should be increased and again, the wavelength must be 90 degrees with the direction of the propagation. Okay, should be 90 degrees. Right, and this one also, if you see, this one also 90 degrees with the direction of the propagation. Okay, must be perpendicular. Okay, so that's how you draw for the deep, shallow and deep area, okay, for the wavelength. Right, how about this one? Okay, for this one, okay, this is how you draw. Okay, this is the converge, right? Converge lens. So for the converge lens, okay, converge lens, you already know for the converge that we converge all the wave, okay, all the wave or all the light, okay, into one point. So here you can see, all right, when it pass through the uh, converge lens, it focuses at the one point. 
So this is the point. Okay. So it will focus at one point. Okay. So we call it as a, this is the converge, uh, conve uh, convex lens. So this is what happened when the wavelength passed through the convex lens. So it will converge into one point. So all the wavelength will converge at one point. Okay, then after that, it will go back, okay, to normal. Okay, and you can see at this part, the wavelength is closer to each other. Okay, because you put the lens there, so at that part, the depth of the water is decreasing. Okay, all right. And this is the convex, uh, sorry, this is a dive, uh, con concave lens. So, concave lens, they diverge, all right. So, you can see here at one point, it diverge. Okay, it diverge. Okay, but at this part again, when you put the concave lens there, so at that part, the depth of the water will be decreased. Okay, so this is, they say this is the your ripple tank. So you put the lens here. So this is the water, right? So when you put the uh, convex lens here, right? So you can see the depth of the water here will be decreased if you compare with this one. So that's why he said this one is the uh, shallow area, okay? And this part, the wavelength will be decreased if you compare to this one. Okay, but when it come out, all right, the wavelength will be diverge. Okay, it will diverge like that. Okay, but for this one, okay, from at the shallow area, okay, the wavelength, okay, will become closer. But when it come out, it will focus at one point because the uh, convex lens, okay, is the converge. It converge all the light all the way into one point. So this is the F. We call it as the focus point. All right. So, can you understand for this one? Any uh, any question you want to ask? Kelly, can you really understand? Uh, Alicia is not here. Wait, I check the attendance again. Alicia. Mm. Just now Alicia and then Kaiser already here. Yong Wei. And Yong Wei. Okay, already here. Mm, and then Wang Shu Yan Lu Li Jing Yi Wang Shu Yan not here Wang Shu Yan not here Alicious and Wang Shu Yan Shu Yan has line problem. Cannot, cannot uh, join the Google Meet. So means only uh, Alicia's is not here. Okay, wait. Okay. Okay, so for those who just um, join the class, can you please join the link? Okay, click the link and put the code. This is the code. All right. Okay, any other question you want to ask? Everyone clear? Okay. Hello. 
Okay, since no one to uh, answer my question, so I will ask you a question. All right, so please uh, answer this question. All right, it says here a plane wave have a wavelength of 2 cm and velocity of 8 cm per second as it move okay, over the surface of shallow water. When the plane wave move in an area of greater depth, its velocity becomes 12 cm per second. What is the wavelength of the wave, all right, in the area of greater depth? So what's the formula that you should use here? They say if you don't know or you're not sure, you can just put, I don't know, I'm not sure, and then submit. Okay, 21 more. So what's the formula that you should use here? So the refraction is uh, the frequency is same, right? Okay, so lambda 1, okay. V1 over lambda 1 equals to V2 over lambda 2. Junkia, Ingwei, Lavanya, Kianzing, Hauren, Kaiser. Where is Lavanya, Haran, Kaiser? If you're not sure or you don't know how to answer, just put I don't know, I'm not sure. Or maybe you only know halfway to do it.
Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so let's check your answer. 3, not sure, not sure. 3 cm, don't know. Okay. I don't know 3 cm, but I'm not sure. Okay, so let's check the answer. Okay, so it says here, uh, plane wave has a wavelength of 2 cm, right? So the wavelength, the lambda one is 2 cm. Okay, and the velocity of the plane wave is 8 cm per second. So, means the V1 is 8 cm per second. Okay, and it's moved over the surface of shallow water. So, when the plane wave move uh, into an area of greater depth, okay, so its velocity becomes 12. So, means now the new velocity is lambda 2 is 12 cm. Okay. And what is the wavelength of the wave in the area of greater depth? So, I mean, you have to find the, uh, sorry, this is the V2, right? The velocity, okay, it's become 12 cm and you need to find the lambda here. So, it's the lambda 2 here. So, we use the formula V1 over lambda 1 is V equals to V2 over lambda 2. Okay, V1 is 8, v lambda 1 is 2, V2 is 12, lambda 2. Okay, you need to find. So, you just cross multiply. 8 lambda 2 times, uh, sorry, equals to 12 times 2 is 24. So, lambda 2 is 3 cm. Okay, so that's the answer. So, let's check your answer. 3 cm, okay, 3 cm, I don't know, not sure, 3 cm, 3 cm, okay, so mostly, most of you who answer, okay, got correct, okay, 3 cm, 3 cm, okay, so how you got 6 cm here? Okay, so 3, 3, 3. So this one, how we come 0 0.33 or 0 0.75? Oh, okay. All right, 3 cm, 3, not sure. Okay, now can you understand how to calculate for the question just now? Okay, you use the formula, all right? So you use the formula lambda 1, uh, V1 over lambda 1 yeah, equals to V2 over lambda 2. Okay, so this is actually for refraction of wave only. Okay, for the refraction of wave only. Okay, you use this formula. Okay, V1 lambda 1 equals to V2 over lambda 2. Okay, because for the refraction of wave, we know the frequency is same. Okay, before and after the wave, okay, being uh, refracted. Okay, but let's say for the uh, reflection of wave, you just use V is equals to F lambda. Okay, because there is no change of speed, okay, of frequency and also the lambda. The only thing that change for the reflection of wave is actually the direction of propagation. Alright, so let's move on to the another one. Okay, try this one. It's same this question number one. But this one, you need to find one wavelength first. What is the one wavelength? One wavelength for P and one wavelength for Q. Yeah.
Okay, I will give the formula here in case you still cannot remember the formula. Yeah, I see some of you already answer. Very good. So remember, you have to find one wavelength first. You cannot just use 12 cm. Okay, you have to divide with how many wavelength is there. Okay, I give um, one more minute. Okay, and then I will discuss uh, the answer. And then after that, you have to present your project. Please try to answer. It's okay if it's wrong. Yonjun, Lavanya, Wai Hong, Lu Ling, Jin Yi. Hello. Kaiser, Lavanya. <coughs> Hi. 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 Oh, you you have two names, is it? Okay. So we close the submission. Okay, so let's check your answer. So here it said the diagram shows a water wave moving from one area P to another area of Q, okay, of Q at different depth, okay. You have to calculate the speed of water wave in Q is the speed of water wave in P is 80 cm. Alright, so mean at P is 80 cm S of a, 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 a centimeter cm, centimeter cm S negative 1, sorry. Okay, so here you use V1 over lambda 1 is equals to V2 over lambda 2, right? So here 12 cm is actually equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So 4 lambda is actually equals to 12. So you have to find the 1 lambda first. So 12 divided by 4, you will get 3. So 1 lambda is 3. So V here is 18, the lambda is 3. Okay, and the V2 you need to find, alright, and then the lambda 2 here, so how many wavelength from here to here? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 12 divided by 8. So 8 lambda is equals to 12. Lambda is 12 over 8. Okay, so 12 over 8 you will get 1.5. So each lambda is 1.5. So means from here to here is 1.5. From here to here is 3 cm. Alright. Okay, then you can cross multiply. 18 times 1.5, you will get 27. Okay, and this one is 3 V2. 
Okay, cross multiply. So V2 is 27 divided by 3, you will get 9 cm as negative 1. So that's the answer. So let's check. Okay, correct 9. Okay, not 4, 9, 9, 9. Very good. Okay, not sure, 9, 9, 9. Okay, and this one also 9, 9. This is how you get, 11, how do you get 11.25? Should be 9. Okay, 9, no, 9. Okay, 9, 9, yes. Is it 9? Yes. Okay, no, this is not 4, eh, Kelly? Okay, 9. Alright, correct. So, mostly of you got the answer correct. Okay, so for those who didn't get the answer 9, can you understand how you get uh, the answer? Okay, you should find one wavelength first. Okay, because this one is actually for P, uh, they have the 4 wavelength here. So, you have to count how many wavelength there and then you have to divide by 12. Okay, so are you clear for this one? Okay, so later uh, when the school open, alright, when the school open, I will give you uh, a few questions, okay, uh, to test whether you can still remember or you can still understand for how to calculate for the uh, wavelength, okay, for the refraction of wave. Alright, so now it's time for you, okay, to present. So are you ready? I will just pick uh, randomly, okay. Hmm. So make sure uh, you can share your screen, okay, and your mics can be used. All right, the first one to present is volunteering allowed? Uh, yes, you can volunteer, okay. But this one, let give uh to Yin Hui first. Okay, after this, if anyone uh, want to want to present, you can just tell me. Alright? So, Tan Yin Hui. Okay. After Yin Hui is uh, Wai Hong. Okay, very good. Yin Hui, are you here, Tan Yin Hui? Okay. So, uh, I will stop sharing my screen. Okay. So, I will give you, are you already prepared? Okay, if you're ready, you can share your screen and you can open your mic. So, we're waiting for Yin Hui, okay? So, this is uh, uh, the thing that I will give, okay? Okay. Uh, what is the characteristic, okay, for you to get a marks, okay? So, first I will see the PowerPoint, of course, and then the video and the principle you use, all right? Uh, how you explain, okay? Is it easy for me to understand or your friends to understand? And also the procedure and the next one is the creativity and also the how you present, okay? The presentation itself. Okay, so Yin Hui, can you present now? Oh, yang ni. Okay, Yin Hui. Any problem? Tan Yin Hui. Okay. Good.
Are you okay? Can you open your mic? Uh, yes. Okay. So I give it to you, right? Okay, good luck. All the best. Uh, hi, my name is Daniel Hui and my physics project is the pulley system. So what is the pulley system? So using a pulley provides a mechanical advantage. I'm, I'm sorry, can you please uh, change to slideshow presentation so you can, you can see better? Yeah. How do I do that? Uh, it's at the below part here. Uh, you can see below part. Yeah, that one. I pressed already. Oh, okay. Never mind. All right, right. Continue. So, using a pulley system provides a mechanical advantage that makes it easier to move a load. The term mechanical advantage refers to the force needed to move a load divided by the resistance force that the load exerts, such as its weight. Higher mechanical advantage means that less effort is required to move the same load. So the materials are two rims with a hook, two bottles with one liter of water, and a bottle with 0 0.5 liter of water and a rope. So this is the single pulley system before modification. So the single pulley system, as you can see from the picture, one liter of water, one liter of water needs the same amount of weight, which is also one liter, in order to be balanced. The friction between the rope and the wheels of the pulleys increases as more pulleys are added to the system. This makes it more difficult to move the load. This is the diagram, which the one the hundred newton of the weight is exerted, which is we need we also need 100 newton force to lift the object so after the modification this is a um double pulley system which we will be using two rims this is a more close look of the double pulley system so after the modification which is also a double pulley system as you can see from the double pulley system, the amount of water we need to balance out the one liter of water is half into 0 0.5 liter, which is um, the force needed is half to balance out the bottle. It involves sufficiently little friction with this double pulley system and the effort that must be exerted to move the load is nearly half. This is the diagram for the double system. So as a conclusion, it is clear that using a double police system is better than using a single police system as it reduces the effort required to move a given load. Examples of double police system in our daily life is when a truck uses a double pulley to reduce the load on by half by pulling a heavy load or dislodging one that is struck. Industrial and construction operations operations often use them with cranes and hoists to move large pallets of materials or to lift materials for building constructions. Thank Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Tan Yin Hui, all right? Okay, uh, so maybe next time if uh, you want to present, make sure uh, your voice is uh, clear, okay? Your voice is clear, okay? Uh, all right, so we move on to the next one. To the next. Okay, so who's volunteer just now? Fai Hong, right? Okay, so thank you, Yin Hui. Fai Hong, are you ready? Uh, give me a sec. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 
uh, like this. Uh, uh, okay, I don't mind the simplicity of the sorry, but you share of a straw. Wait, uh, I should probably keep it like this. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, welcome to my physics presentation. My the topic that I chose is to of my project is called a balloon rocket. Basic, or in other words, we're using Newton's second law of motion. So, how does Newton's second law of motion affects this balloon rocket experiment that I'm doing? Uh, Newton's second law of motion involves acceleration. Ba basically. What I'm about to do is the straw is going to be going across the string, which I'm going to show the image on the next slide. And basically, the way how the second law of motion works is the force is affected by the mass on um, acceleration. But how does how does this project affect acceleration, you say? The experiment will be conducted with the balloon in different sizes. The balloon sizes will basically tell you the amount of Accelerations that's being pushed down through the straw, which is the air. That's why they dictate the different velocities. Some photos of the experiments like like this. This, this is what's going to be attached to the string. This is the pole with the string attached. Here's the pink color right here. And this is the experiment tied to this pillar right here. This is the string. This is the straw and the balloon. The materials used are a long string, as long as you want, a straw, any material length, some tape, a balloon. And a side note, the experiment must be conducted at the environment where you can attach the string to, for example, a wall. And yes, this is a wall. Modifications that are applied to it. During my first test run, the balloon exploded, so I had to double check it to make sure it doesn't. Rest in peace, the first balloon run. And the string is checked to make sure that the balloon, the straw, doesn't get stuck while moving through it, as seen as a close-up between the image. Now, I'm about to share a video. As you can see from the first attempt, I may, may blow air into the balloon. This is the first attempt dictating how much acceleration is going through the straw. This is how big the balloon is the first attempt. As you can see, the second, as soon as I let go of the balloon, the straw is in this position, which means that with that much air, the straw goes to here. But on the second attempt, the balloon is bigger. As you see, I had to double check the balloon to make sure that it's bigger. As you can see, the second, the second attempt, the balloon is obviously bigger than the first attempt, which means there is more air in the balloon. So what does this mean? The straw, on the second attempt, the straw went all the way to the end of the pillar, which means that the balloon is exerting a higher force of acceleration because of the amount of air that's pushing through the balloon. And that's why, that's how the second law of motion is affected in this experiment. And some references that I use for the video. This one right here is the video to the rocket balloon. You can click the link. And this one,
Don't mind that one. It's just a intentional mess up. But that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening to it. Okay, very good presentation, right? So, um, uh, for Yin Hui, right? So, I noticed you don't have a video, okay? So, maybe you can come up for a video because there is a mark, okay, for a video that you make, okay? So, it can just be like show that actually your experiment is working, okay? You can compare, right? If you use one, throw one, uh only one uh one level or two level okay so you can compare between this uh two uh two type of trolley okay so what's the difference all right so please send me the video okay so i can see and i can give you mark if not i cannot give the mark for the video all right so Wai Hong, very good okay uh it's impressive okay so i want like that okay uh, so very good Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So anyone who wants to volunteer can still have one more presenter. Anyone want to volunteer? Okay, no one. So I mean I have to choose. Okay, Wai Hong already done. I will remove. Okay, Chu Jian Yu. Are you here, Chu Jian Yu? Yes, okay. So, can you present? Are you ready? Okay, you can share your screen. Okay, so Chia Chu Jian Yu, can you share your screen now? Okay, good luck. Good morning, teachers and my fellow friends. Today, I would like to present my project that is cotton ball launcher. The picture shown here is the model of the cotton ball launcher. First of all, I would like to introduce the topic that I will talk, uh, talk later. First is the physics concept new in use in this project. Second is the apparatus and materials used. Third is the step of making the project. Fourth is the explanation how physics concept use. Fifth is the modification. And last is the video and the result of project and the reference. First, the physics concept used in cotton ball launchers is catapult. The parts are simple or compound mechanism that proper an object. A catapult store potential energy and release it. The physics concept that a catapult is based on is that store potential energy can be converted into moving energy that is kinetic energy. And the apparatus and the materials used are a short pencil, 
a thin rubber band, a cardboard tube, two cardboard tube, packing tape or other strong tape, scissor, cotton balls, and a hole punch. The step of making cotton ball lunches is first use the scissor to cut one of the toilet paper tube in half lengthwise. Second, use the hole punch to punch two holes in the skinny tube. Make the holes opposite one another half an inch away from the end so you can poke your pencil all the way through the tube. Third, squeeze the row so that it becomes narrow about half the original diameter, then tap it to hold in place. Fourth, push the pencil through the hole. Fifth, on your second toilet paper tube, cut two slit into one end of the tube. Cut two more slit on the same end of the tube directly across from the first two. Seven, loop the rubber band through the slit on each side. Eight, put a piece of tape over the slit to reinforce the cup of tape. Nine, holding the rubber band so that the rubber band are at the top. Slide the narrow tube into the wider one with the pencil at the bottom. And look each rubber band and around the pencil. Eleven, place a cotton ball on the top so that it rests in the narrow tube. And the cotton ball lunch is done. So when it is done, it can lunch through the air. But do you know it can be why it can be lunch? The size behind the front is called transferring energy. When you pull the rubber band back, you are applying force over distance and doing work on the rubber band. It's used two types of energy to load and launch your cotton ball. As you drew back on the pencil with the cotton ball load, you added potential energy to the system. The farther you pull back on the pencil, the more potential energy was being stored. When you release the pencil, the potential energy becomes kinetic energy, and the cotton ball should have gone flying through the air. As you pull back far further on your launcher, more potential energy was added to the system. And the more potential energy you store, the more kinetic energy should have been released when you shoot the cotton ball. As a result, the farther you pull back on the launcher, the farther cotton ball should have traveled. For the modification, the first problem that I face is the cardboard is too short and the elastic of rubber band is weak. The second is the cotton ball is too big when put into the tube. So for the solution, I take a more longer cardboard tube and cut into half to make the cardboard tube more longer. And I find a more elastic and long to rubber band to load the cardboard. The second is I change a smaller cotton ball. And this is the video. And the cotton ball lunch by concept of catapults that remove transferring energy that is from potential energy to kinetic energy. The cotton ball launches is success. And this is the two different websites that I use. Thank you. That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Tian Yu. Okay, very good. All right so um 
uh, we continue we continue after the school holiday right uh, for the presentation so i would stop until now okay so thank you class so i see you after holiday so have a nice holiday okay so take care everyone stay safe okay bye Yeah, welcome.